This episode of JJ Meets World is brought to you by Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty. Listen, folks, Natalie's got a great track record when it comes to selling homes. On average, she's moving homes for $4,000 or more above the list price, plus she's selling homes in less than the market average. What does that mean for you? It means you don't have to keep your house clean all the time if you're selling it. If you're a buyer, no one wants to wait around for a year, two years to find the perfect home. Natalie is going to work her tail off to make sure that she finds you the right home at the right price, and she's going to represent you through the entire buying process. So it's kind of like holding a hand to get across the street. Natalie is going to be that Girl Scout who grabs your hand, pushes the walk button, gets you across the street and then points you down the street to where you need to go. If you're selling a home, Natalie is an amazing person to represent you. She's going to keep you top of mind on all these search engines, all the stuff that you have to worry about. Don't worry. Natalie's going to take on that headache. You don't have to deal with it. So get a hold of Natalie today because on average, she sells a home every 3.74 days. That's two homes a week. Sometimes uh, Natalie's selling enough property to make you think that she's an entire team herself. But no, she is the Wonder Woman of local real estate agents. Natalie Deutsch, 701-388-9338. You can also get a hold of her via email, Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, at HatchRealtyFM.com. Or you can go to the Hatch Realty website, LiveFargoMoorhead.com. That is Live. FargoMoorhead.com, and hey, start packing. Hello, JJ Meets World listener, or first time ever JJ Meets World listener. I don't really care. All that I care about is the fact that you are listening to this podcast, this particular episode right now. Our guest today is Gabby Hirsch. She's a uh, young journalist who just did a story about JJ Meets World in the High Plains Reader, and we talked to her about what it's like to be a kid today. Uh, and not just any kid, but like somebody who seems to have a pretty good head on their shoulders. And then Tucker and I talk about whether or not the term old soul means that you're a boring kid or you're just somebody who is soon to be a tax accountant. Plus, you can go to Patreon.com and support this podcast. Patreon.com slash JJ Meets World. Every dollar helps. So don't drink a cup of coffee today. Give us some money instead. Even if you were going to make homemade coffee. Just give us some money on Patreon. Podcast begin. One, two, three, four. J.J. Gordon, sort of like that Indiana Jones in that he's always sniffing out his next adventure. Yes, he is. He's always interviewing guests so he can have them on his show and they can talk about pop culture, arts, and leisure. J.J. has his flag unfurled and he likes his french fries curled and he's fun and then he twirls as he goes to meet the world. He will march into the rain even if his ankle sprain. Take a peek inside his brain. This podcast is called J.J. Meets World. In downtown St. Paul, Minnesota, there's an Italian grocery and then like, it's like a pot pasta history, I think is how they say it. Like a, you know, like a patisserie is a French like bake shop, patisserie, but this is like for pasta. It's called Cassettas and I love it. I love it so much because of a couple things. Number one, the Italians really know how to do a grocery store. If you've never been to like an actual Italian grocery store, you're missing out because they've got an entire aisle that's dedicated to like olive oil and right. liquids. Right. Um, they sell pepperoni by the stick, which I'm always a fan of. Mm -hmm. And usually like the cheeses are pretty on point. You got to find that old world pepperoni so you get it to curl up at the edges. Yeah, that's the well. So that's what I've that's what I per purchased. Right. Because it's, it's not like a Slim Jim where you get a straight stick. It should, like Tucker said, it should curl up like a like the Cheshire Cat smile <laughs> a little bit at the very <laughs> at the very beginning of an Alice in Wonderland tale. Pepperoni is something that I have just worshipped as a food product since I was a kid. So good. And I've never taken the time to find out how it's made, and I don't want to see it get made. Although I'm kind of afraid that it's something where. If they just discover some old pepperoni from like an old Sicilian mill back from the 20s, they'd be like, oh, it's still good. It's pepperoni. That's the beauty of it, right? I don't so, know. Is that I, how it works? I think like it's, well, I don't know if it was the 20s. I don't know if 90 plus years of aging. I don't know how long curing happens with yeah. cured meats. But I was recently watching a YouTube clip about dry aging steak. 
and which is something I'd like to do at one point. Didn't you just do that in meat. butter or something? So yeah, so that was the thing is like dry aging in butter is interesting to me. And somebody told me recently they're like, Jesus, are you an old man? <laughs> you spent like twenty minutes talking about dry aging in butter. And you invited well, me over well, for cribbage. Well, what do cribbage? you want to talk about, Andy? Do you want to talk about how football went last night again? We could talk about that, Andy, if you want. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is I've been accused of being an old man many times. An old soul, if you will. Oh, you really yeah. rolled your eyes I'm not, at old not soul. Not at you being old soul. I've been called that, too. And I think what people don't understand is when they say a kid has an old soul, they're really saying that kid is boring oh. and would rather stay inside. <laughs> uh, I take it as this. I just don't connect with the youth of today, <laughs> and I never have. Even when I was a youth of that day, mm-hmm. I didn't connect with my friends. Right? They were telling me about, like, oh, I want to get this skateboard. And me, I was like, I want to get a basket on my bicycle so I can bring my groceries home. Right, and now it's like I don't know what a meme economy is. There's, wh- a what? Exactly. Exactly. And I will never understand cryptocurrency. Right. In fact, every time I hear the term cryptocurrency, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure I saw an episode of Batman with Adam West where they dealt with (laughs) the cryptocurrency. It's a gang, right? (laughs) But the the beauty is, is like, I don't shun the youth. Like, I enjoy listening to, like, their conversations and eavesdropping. I'll go to the mall and pretend to be reading a big old newspaper and be wearing sunglasses inside. It seems now like what it is to be a kid today is so much more uh, just diverse in in experience Mm -hmm. than it used to be and i i haven't been in a high school in years so i don't know if the clicks are the same right if if that sort of social fragmentation happens at the same level i just i don't understand but what do we call the generation below us now because you and i are millennials what are they zennials right really i think that's what they are zennials man who picks those names i don't know but we gotta stop people do promposals when you, d- you were your age? Oh, goodness, no. Neither did I. No. In fact, here's how I went to prom my sophomore year. Uh, drama class, da 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 Yeah, I'm a junior. Wait, you're a junior? You, but this is level one performing arts. Well, I'm a junior. Oh, are you going to prom? No, I don't have a date. Oh, I'll take you if I can go to prom. <laughs> okay. Will you be my prom ticket? Yep. And the rest, rest is history. <laughs> and here's how my second prom date went. Well, we're already dating, so it's pretty much assumed that we're going to prom together. <laughs> And here's how my third prom date went. <sighs> yeah. Well, prom? Okay. <laughs> I'm probably going to ruin it for you. <laughs> and then I did. What did you do to ruin prom? Well, we decided, like, we went with a big group of people. We got a limo, and we went to play Dance Dance Revolution before we went uh-huh. to, like, the Grand March. And this is where things really went off the rail. <laughs> we, By the time we got back to the Civic Center for prom, because we have our prom, like, in a big Civic Center in Damn. Fargo, uh, we missed a grand march, and her parents were PO'd. Yeah. Really PO'd. And so sh- that was already bad enough. And then we went downstairs to take our photo, and I'm like, hey, let's take a funny photo. And I remember the Haney brothers were taking photos. And so I grabbed this, like, screwdriver, and I'm going, why am I holding a screwdriver? And she picked up the thing that you wrap cords around. And so I'm like, this will be great. And so then we went up, we danced, and then she she was not having a good time. I think this her parents being mad at her threw off the whole night. And then she didn't want to go to post prom. But three weeks later, when I got our pictures, I opened them up in front of my favorite secretary at Fargo South High, and we both went like this, oof, <laughs> because her face, her expression. She was so pissed at, like, this funny photo (laughs) that I imagine it's probably still hanging up in the Haney's development Uh, room. We got to get a copy of that photo. Well, my problem is that she still lives in Fargo, so so? I don't want to embarrass embarrass her too much. But I I will show it. I carry it around. In fact, JJ Meets World listeners, if you meet me in person, ask to see a picture of that because I'll gladly show you. I have one on my phone that I'll show you. One of the Haney's, reach out. You'd be like, oh, we got that. We blew it up. Heine, Heine's, not Heine's, Heine's, slide into my DMs. That's a thing kids say, right? <laughs> slide into my DMs. It sounds like something a pedophile says. <laughs> uh, did you post that on like the Yo Gabba Gabba page <laughs> no. somewhere? I just I just assume anything I hear now is probably from a Justin Timberlake song. 
And I'm just like, uh, See, now probably funny. thing he said. When you say that, I'm like, hey, you remember the musical The Wiz? Slide some oil to me. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy this episode today because we actually reach out to a youth. Uh, <laughs> and we're schooled. Hey, she local teaches us kid. a new term. That's right. She teaches us a new term. Uh, her dad is a fan of mine during my day job yeah. on the radio. Yeah, I wonder if this will be his first episode of JJ Meets World. That's a good question. Well, listen, Mr. Hirsch, here's a shout out on here, and I gave you a shout out on the radio, too. Uh, Gabby Hirsch, who wrote the article about us that's in the High Plains Reader. Yeah, Gabby's awesome, and and when she came in to do the interview, we were like, this person's cool. She should come in and be a guest. So mm -hmm. We should have interviewed her right then and there, and we could have saved her a trip, but I will say this. The people who complain about the youth of today, Gabby got up at like 7.30 on a Saturday morning yeah. to beat Cheeks down to uh, downtown Fargo so she could be on this podcast. And she didn't roll in like yawning with a giant cup of coffee and a hood over her head. She was prepped. She's ready to go. She's very professional. Yeah. I was late <laughs> that morning. Yep. Uh, uh, so just throwing that out there. So uh, enjoy this and then go back and read the article that Gabby wrote about us. And, uh, you know, don't. Don't give kids such a hard time. And if you're a kid, just stop doing stupid stuff. You're just perpetuating a stereotype. JJ Meets World. Uh, Gabby Hirsch, welcome to the JJ Meets World Studios. You are the fourth Gabby I've ever oh, met no. in my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that I was the fourth Gabby on the show. I think mm. you're the first Gabby first on the Gabby. show. I better be. Yeah. Which really, it's, it's perfect because first Gabby. if you take the word Gab... You know, to speak, to talk. <laughs> we should have had a Gabby on. I mean, really, we're all one. Gabby every time we come in That's here. Right. If this were the 1920s, this show <laughs> would be, uh, <laughs> would be described as Gabby. <laughs> I was uh, a really shy kid, and people always expected me to talk. They're like, "Well, you're so you're Gabby, right?" I was like, "No." No, oh, it's gotta be tough when your name is also a description for somebody. Well, it's yeah. also it's tough when your name sounds like a swear word, like you, like Tucker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's, yeah. that's fun to grow up with, too. That's funny. Yeah. I didn't know the F word was a swear word until, like, way after I should have. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think it was, then? I didn't know that, that. I had never heard that word. I guess my parents, like, just never used it. I'd never heard it. You can't really say it on TV, especially, like, kids' programs. I was, like, eight or nine, and my uncle was telling me a story. He was, like, talking about my cousin and, who was really young and, like, learning to talk, and he was trying to say the word truck, and my uncle was telling the story and he's like, and he said, fuck. And I was like, what's wrong with fuck? And they're like, <gasps> like, I was like, I've never heard. I don't think that's a word. I don't get it. You just know? think if they yeah. captured that on you, like on video, <laughs> that could be a YouTube darling these days. Or at least uh, are you uh, so uh, are you old enough to remember America's funniest home videos? Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. So I remember thinking I my family could get on this show if I could just <laughs> manufacture something. Yeah. If I could yep. get... We did we tried that too. Did you? Yeah, we did. <laughs> did you ever end up getting anything good? No. Because my dad's I, a terrible actor. I got <laughs> when it, it comes to that. I got in big trouble because I tried to use our riding lawnmower to do this thing where like I bumped into uh like stuff and I ended up breaking our neighbor's bird bath. Oh my god. They were very unhappy. <laughs> Very, very unhappy. Ours was far less imaginative than whatever you were trying to do. Brianna just hid in the dryer, and then <coughs> Dad came down to get the laundry, and Brianna surprised him, and he went, well, you should, oh! <laughs> you should have not told him. He shouldn't have been in on it. He was in on it from the start. That was mm -hmm. absolutely- It was probably his idea. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. Kids, kids, let's get on national television. <laughs> Come on. Um, Gabby, tell us a little bit about your story. Where are you from? What are you doing? Well, I'm from Fargo. Born and raised. I Fargo North or Fargo South? Fargo North mm -hmm. is where I graduated from. Yep. Tucker's excited about that. Yes. Hell yeah. As, as he should be. It's a little community up there. I always, I mean, a lot of Northsiders, Northsiders say this, but like it's its own little small town in Fargo. So. Because we keep those Southies out. That's why. Maybe that's why. You know, I, so when I lived with Tucker, in his father's home. Mm -hmm. It was on the north side of Fargo. And it was the first time I had ever lived on the north side. And you're right. I mean, I've lived on the south side the whole time. It's almost like you live in an entirely different town. Well, and there are little pocket communities in that community. So where we were living, that's the Horseman neighborhood. And I mean, that has been like a little 
uh, oh, yeah. community for a very long time because it's an old part of town. Mm-hmm. The Roosevelt mm-hmm. neighborhood up yeah. on the north side. Yeah. They're really based, based they're around where passionate. the elementary schools are. Yeah. Each of I those really, Longfellow. really is like its own little, yeah. little community there. Yeah, you're right. Is Longfellow the one that's north of 19th Avenue? Yes. Yeah, uh, like it's on, on Elm. Elm. Yep. And that's how you really like describe locations in North Fire. Like, okay, where is it in relation to like Elm? Right. Yep. Or 10th Street yep. or Broadway? Yep. Or is it by Hornbacher? Is it by Mickelson Park? <laughs> yeah. Is it by El Zagel? Oh, by tr- up by Trollwood? Got it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was bummed when they moved Trollwood out of North Fargo. Me too. I love Oh going yeah, up that to was North an institution. Fargo. I actually lived there for 3 days when I was a kid cuz growing up my dad was a teacher at Trollwood and I remember our carpets got replaced with hardwood floors in the house, I want to say like 1990, 91 something like that. So we needed to be out of the house for like 3 days cuz it was a big project and so we ended up my mom, my dad, my sister, and I living in the teacher's lounge at Trollwood oh. Park for three days. Oh, my goodness. Which to kids is like, this is the coolest thing because <laughs> our backyard is a entire park. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But then I was going to Trollwood as a kid just when dad was teaching stuff and watching the shows. And so for me, it was actually super bittersweet when Trollwood left that park yeah. because that's like, that's where Trollwood is. Now, even like the big uh, uh, the school building the office building yeah, it's, it's not gone. even there right? yeah. it's just gone now they took yep. that away yeah it's flat wow flattened your story's a... way better because <laughs> i mean when i was in between like i hear that a lot actually <laughs> yeah um we were moving and so we sold the house when i was a kid and like couldn't move in for a couple of days and we just stayed at the motel six so mm. it was I hated it. Yeah. They was it specifically the Motel it, 6? It specifically like, yeah. was um, over by the mall, kind of. Because I was thinking to myself, <laughs> I've stayed at a lot of the hotels in Fargo, but Motel 6 is one I have not stayed at. Or maybe it was Super 8. They're right, they're right called, next to yeah, each other. So it was much. one of those. Same thing. Had a number. Or wait, or is this... Was it a 7-Eleven? Is 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 no. Is this... A motel, motel 6 is by the mall. So I, it was, isn't Super 8? Wasn't that on South University? Oh, maybe. So it was the one, there's like the interstate when you're going north to mm-hmm. get to the mall. It's like that exit. Yeah, that's Motel 6, like, I think. Per, by Perkins across the street. Pre, yeah, because it's- Motel 6. It shares a part of a parking lot with a uh, Burger King establishment, I believe. Right hmm. there. People are really going to know their way around Fargo after this podcast. Oh, there's people, there's people already who are should. like, it's the Motel 6. Get out, get, stop. It is the- Just yeah. then, move on to the next <laughs> subject. So uh, what? how old are you when you moved? Um- We used to move a lot. My mom would like get sick of houses very quickly. But that time I was six. So So I, yeah. How many times did you move before you graduated from high school? Hmm. That many times, huh? Three or four. Yeah. Okay, three. So did that end up giving you a sense of like, this is just the place where I sleep? (laughs) Um,. No, I don't know. I guess I never, we lived there long enough, like for years at a time. So, but yeah, I always, now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, I wish I had that like lifetime house, but we've been in um, this house since 2005. My parents lived there. So is it not itching to try something new? No, I guess not. Uh, (laughs) Tucker and I have friends who are in the same boat. They've got this wanderlust for a new home every couple of years. How many times have I moved in the past? I was going to bring that up. (laughs) I know that if I ever move again in my entire life, which is not very likely, but Tucker will do it single handedly. Yep. Because I've moved him enough times yep. now. Yeah, but it'll just be on me. Mm-hmm. I'll be a millionaire at that point, so I'll just yep. pay for someone to do it. <laughs> the last time Tucker the moved, plan. it was like 95 degrees out, and the humidity oh was awful, and he and I were just sweating to beat <laughs> yeah. the band. And I was like, uh. and then there was a guy who was digging through the garbage. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, that's to see, right. if you, to see if you had thrown out anything good, and he's like, oh, some of these canned goods. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, he just seemed like a normal dude. He was like, yeah. hey, yeah, I like to dig through trash. Yeah, just yeah. to find if there's anything oh, interesting. This, this food, how good do you think this food is? And I said, I don't know. It's been out here for four days. Mm-hmm. It's an oddly normal thing. Yeah. That normal people do is dig through trash. Yep. Like yep. dumpster diving. Let's face it. That's what we do during cleanup week. Is that, I mean, is we're that digging through people's trash? That's true. And we're kind of. But they're laying it out for you. Like, yeah. Right. It's like a. It, Here's my curated. It's a trash free garage collection. sale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free garage sale because it, it's the same treasure hunt mentality. Yes. I'm gonna dig through this stuff. I'm gonna look through this stuff. It's kind of even when you go to a thrift store. 
Mm-hmm. Even though that's not garbage, but it's somebody's garbage. It's someone's yeah. that they threw out, mm-hmm. and you're just going, maybe I'll find something amazing inside of all this garbage. Have you ever found anything amazing? No. No. I'm going to tell that's a story. A, nothing, nothing that I could describe as amazing. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story that's not mine. It belongs to our first guest, Scotch Noel Anderson. <laughs> He and his buddies, he's going to radio school up in Thief River Falls. And that's how Scotch tells you where I went to radio school in Thief River Falls. It's never just when I was going to school or when I was getting my foot into radio. No, it's I went to radio school in Thief River Falls. (laughs) So while he was there, he lived with a couple of guys and they had an apartment and someone was throwing out a perfectly good couch. And he's like, look at this couch. It's going to be amazing. So they pick up the couch, put it in the back of a truck, bring it to their apartment. They're like. Let's throw a party tonight, like a couch warming party. <laughs> so they're throwing this couch warming party, and during it, Scotch <laughs> almost drinks like a bee out of this keg cup that he's got. And he's like, oh, my God, there's a bee in this keg cup. I almost drank it. Well, long story short, <laughs> oh, no. there was a beehive in this. The couch had been on the like street long enough to no. have started a colony of bees. And they were probably like wasps or hornets or yellow jackets. And so everyone's like, and it was one of those like out of a movie where there's like, hey, there's a bee. And then you see someone swatting it like another bee. And they're like, oh, my God, there's bees everywhere. And so they all had to run out of the apartment and then figure out like, well, what are we going to do? We've got a half tapped keg up there that we need to get back. And we need to somehow fight the bees. This is being guarded by bees. Oof. So they learned a very important lesson uh, about taking things from the street. That's really why I've never grabbed a couch or anything yeah. from the street. I've always like driven by and wanted to. But then I got to ask someone with a truck to help me get it. And then I might end up with a beehive after it, mm-hmm. which is my luck. That would happen to me. Are you allergic to bees? No. Well, then you're, so you're not, it's not so bad. It could be worse. I hate bees. Really? Yeah, I mean, they're not pleasant to be around. I mean, they're still painful things. So. They hurt. Recently, I started <laughs> keeping bees, and I found that b- honey bees and sweat bees are- Sweat bees? Sweat bees. Have you ever heard of that? No. Yeah, it's, a, it's a type of bee, I guess. Okay. Sounds fake. It does sound fake, but it's not. <laughs> My bees are Italian, just oh. so you know, too. They're Italian. And do you know that they actually <laughs> the take bee. like they take a marker, <laughs> and they mark the queen like oh, with right. a big red like Sharpie, and so that's how you know which one is the queen. So I learned a lot about bees. Anyway- so bees are very gentle. It's the wasps yes. and hornets. Those are the real jerks of the insect world. And I found out recently there's a whole there's a whole subsection of like wasps that don't have nests. They burrow under the ground. Yeah. And so like if you lay down in the grass on a, a nice summer's day, all of a sudden these things can come up from the ground and like. <gasps> bing, 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 bing. A hornet stung me in my bed once because it was under my blanket. No. When I was getting into bed. Did you get it was like, what are you doing here? I've been sitting here all day. No, I wasn't sitting there all day. No, your bee was. Oh, the, the bee wasp. was definitely sitting there all day for it sure. It was like, yeah. get out. I was in high school and I was on the phone with my girlfriend and I'm like, hey, hey, Lee, this, yeah, well, maybe we'll go see a movie. <laughs> Ow! And then I was like, what the hell was that? And they throw up the cover and there's this giant wasp right, right there. And, That's funny. Oh, where did it sting you? On my leg. Just on your leg? Yes. Inside or outside? Uh, I think it was on the inner thigh. Oh, yeah. ouch, ouch, yeah. ouch. Yeah, it really sucks. I got stung by a wasp in the second grade on my neck. I didn't even see it. I don't know where it came from. I was in the classroom, and all of a sudden, it just stung me. Ugh. I didn't even cry, and my teacher wrote my parents a note that I was really brave. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby, took that pain. I Gabby was, brave. was really brave. She's she's really coming out of her shell this year. Uh, so when I was a kid, we'd have recess at my elementary school. I went to Claire Barton because I'm a South Side kid. Mm. And one I still thing, have a soft spot in my heart for Claire Barton because of the creative, of creative arts studio. studio. I've played on that playground. It's a good little playground, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it yeah. used to be much better before like they replaced it with the the plasticky stuff. Like oh, back in yeah. the day, the wooden like structure oh, was wow. much better. It's got a fantastic ice shack though. It does. A massive ice house. Schmitty's. Schmitty's is what it's yeah, called. Because that was the name of the guy who tended the warming house. Oh, okay. So they named it after him. <laughs> nice. Also, above above Schmitty's, like the warming house above it. There's a huge like dance studio that no one ever used, and it was great. And I remember going to at least one dance class there way back in the day. In fact, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something taught by your mom way, way back in the day. Could have been. Anyway, so uh, at Claire Barton, 
we'd have recess, and then somebody get on the the horn and be like, "All right, all the fifth graders, recess is over for the fifth graders." And so all the fifth graders would come, and you'd get into a line according to your class. Mm-hmm. So you know, like Mrs. Hallock's class would be in this line, and then they'd wait and they'd count the kids and be like, "Okay, there's supposed to be seventeen kids, seventeen kids." Well, the line was always next to the dumpsters because our dumpsters were on the back end of the building where the back door was from the cafeteria. And so every year there'd be a good month, like usually like late April into late May, where kids are getting stung constantly (laughs) because not only is the sweet, delicious garbage juice there, but it was also... (laughs) Where they had the recycling pods, so all of the glass bottles that had Sticky. beer yeah. and stuff like Soda that. And, stuff. and I used to think, this is the dumbest place to have us line up. Plus, it was a parking lot, so people would be pulling in and out every now and then. And you could, you know, yeah, like, have us line up near it's the bike rack. It's a different era, JJ. It was. What is it with recess and, and like, like, I know it's a big problem for teachers and administrators like get all these kids lined up together or like keep track of all these children on a playground while they're running around but like i feel like there's always ridiculous policies like we weren't allowed to go inside even in the winter like it was like hey mrs p like i really really have to go to the bathroom and she's like fine you have two minutes like it was like okay but like or like if you're cold like you weren't allowed to go inside like yeah. I guess because you need that physical activity or whatever, but it's like, dude, just chill out. Yeah, like let's <laughs> back off, Mrs. Yeah. P. Lee. Back Pump. off, Mrs. P. <laughs> yeah. Pump the brakes a little bit, okay? <laughs> we, we we don't need to worry so much about where mm-hmm. kids are all it was the fenced. time. Where am I gonna go? Yeah. What's more fun than this? You know what I mean? Like, where am I gonna go? As a 10-year-old, I'm gonna yeah. hop the fence and I'm gonna ditch school <laughs> for the day. Like, trust me. I'll be fine. I was such an indoor kid. I was more like, could I just draw instead of go outside yeah. because it's cold out and I don't feel like getting sweaty. And they were like, get out there right now or you're going to end up, <laughs> you're just going to end okay. up wearing sweatpants everywhere <laughs> yep. for the rest of your life. Yep. <laughs> uh, at Claire Barton, we didn't have any, it wasn't a fenced in play area. So like okay. you could walk across the street. I mean, you would get in mega trouble. Mm-hmm. My, I don't know if they did this on the north side, but when... <laughs> Every morning when they would take kind of roll call, people would say if they're having hot or cold lunch. And so they'd know oh, yeah. how many hot lunches to expect. And so it'd be like, you know, hot, cold, hot, <laughs> hot, hot, cold, hot, cold, home. And everyone would go, oh, what? You're going home for lunch today? Yeah, I've got a dentist appointment. Oh, my God. Did you oh, hear Anthony's was, going home? Yeah, he's going, he's going to have a home lunch. <laughs> Uh, and I used to always, I always assumed that kids who were having home lunch were having McDonald's. Oh yeah. But that just came know. to my mind too. I assumed that too. <laughs> right? Because every time I had a dentist appointment or anything, it's like, right. oh, I'm getting mac on. So <laughs> and you'd like make sure you had leftovers so you could bring it back into school and like stunt on all your friends. Yeah, you're like, no big deal. Stunt. What's that? Uh, I've never heard stunt? that term. Stunt? Yeah. Oh, a stunt would be like, like if you're stunting on someone, you're just trying to make sure that they know that you're a little bit superior. So br- that's a, 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 a youthful term for bragging. Not necessarily <laughs> bragging, because like stunting is, is less verbal. You're like showing them. You're just walking oh, through okay. or like. Sorry, I can't go to the concert with you guys because my tickets are VIP. So, <laughs> that was- so it's kind of like oh. a like a sort of like a like a Rub backdoor compliment yeah. type thing where mm. it it tears it's someone what, down yeah, while it builds bit. you up. And what, while you're just saying, it's like, what like, every mean girl in every teenage high school movie does. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. basically, they stunt, yeah. They or stunt like people. yeah, like if you had like a flip phone and you were showing me something cool, I'd be like, oh darn, I can't do that because I have an iPhone 10. Yeah, like, okay, got it. My yeah. phone doesn't do that. Mm. Got it. Uh, like, it's, uh, I will love the show 30 Rock. There's one person who goes, it's hard for me to watch American Idol because I have perfect pitch. So that's, <laughs> kind of, that's kind of like stunting, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like, I compare it to a little bit of a humble brag. Like, humble brag. Humble brag. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like what we're saying. Like, oh, I can't watch that show because I have perfect pitch. Like, you're really just getting your your thing in there for well, yourself. Last night, I was <laughs> watching police interrogations on YouTube <laughs> because they're really fun to watch. <laughs> and I watched a guy stunt, but it didn't work out for him. Oh, no. He, he was this, he was in Canada, and he was this big-time pilot in the military, the Canadian military. And these are real? This is real. This is a real interview. And he 
um, had basically been, they caught him, he had been breaking into homes, and first he was stealing the women's underwear, then he was <clears throat> wearing it and taking photos of himself in the home in the women's underwear, and then it escalated into uh, more assault and then murder. Oh. Right? And this is like a straight-laced, like, six-foot-five pilot who, would, like, would fly the Canadian prime minister and stuff. Like, this guy was legit. Ran, like, a pilot program. All this stuff. And at one point, right as they're beginning, the cop says, uh, you know, so I, you know, uh, Russell, I guess you haven't been in a room. Have you ever been in a room like this before? <laughs> and he goes, the only time I've been in anywhere close to a room like this was when I asked for top secret intel and they gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That is a stunt that's if I've ever stunt. heard yeah, one. That's right? a real uh -huh. good right? stunt. You guys were wondering where that was going, but he stunted him. Oh, was yeah. his name really Russell? I think it was. That's I, have, good, I have that's, to remember what it was. It's exactly the name I want for an individual <laughs> who's doing stuff like that. I Russell. always kind of assume that like people high up are a little weird. Yeah, I mean, if they're if you're going to be that much of a killer uh, in the sense of climbing the social strata, you yeah, know, that maybe there, that's there what might it is. be something about you that's a little little off. But yeah, I, I would agree. The, yeah. at, le at least don't take people who have retained that level at face value. Don't mm -hmm. take them at face value. Right. Absolutely go. There is something about this person that I don't understand that might be terrifying. Mm -hmm. That's probably what it is, too. Yeah, they had to, like, get their way in somehow. Right. How did you convince all these people that you're awesome? Right. Also, the detective never called him colonel because he's a colonel. He never called him colonel Ooh. because in that room, you're not a colonel. Right. right? You're just a guy Aired. that's about to go Yeah, but jail. if this was Jag, <laughs> yeah. you, you would refer to him as a colonel because right. he still is because it's military court. Right. But Did you watch the show Jag? I wasn't that into it. That thing existed for like 15 seasons and I've never seen a single episode. I've never heard of it. Okay, it I, <laughs> so from my understanding of the DVD case from when I worked at Take-Two <laughs> Video, it's like the naval court. Yeah. So if you get into trouble okay. in the Navy, before they send you to civilian court, they, they hang you out to dry in naval court. And JAG stands for something about that. We've had <laughs> military but, people on the show before, and if they're listening, they're like, fuck you. They're like, you know what JAG is. JAG you know is so you... realistic. <laughs> uh, okay, so you grew up on the north side. Yes, I did. Um, I go to NDSU, so I'm still kind of on the north side. I'm majoring in English, which is like, Fun, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know. I'm almost done, so I'm just so disillusioned with it. I'm so done. No, it's just hearing an English major go, I major in English, which is f like fun, I guess. <laughs> when you major in English, what what does that mean? Because, yeah. like, for example, when you major in French, it means that you can read and speak the language. Yes. Well. English is the same way. Is it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, um, a lot of people, that's people a language. common misconception. It, people think that you go to school for English because like, you like literature or writing or whatever, but actually you t you major in English because you really don't know how to read and write very well yet. So we do read a lot, but things like Good Night Moon. And, really? Are you no, serious? No. Because uh, I love Good Night Moon. <laughs> I love that book. It's that's hard a great for me to book. Get no, life. we do read a lot of literature <laughs> stuff, but... I would sum it up as like research. Like we do so much research with the end product in mind. Like you're writing a long paper on something and you have like a critical theory in mind, but you're doing a lot of research. And Is, is, is the end goal for you though, are you pursuing it to be a journalist or, or is that primarily the goal or what, what do you see it serving your life going forward? Yes. I don't know. So, okay. <laughs> well, I'm also minoring in broadcast journalism okay. and I see myself kind of veering that way. So I guess what English has helped me do is like given me those writing skills, um, given me creative writing skills and just more like open my mind to knowing how to do that and Got create it. a product. But I would like to write films Got and it. then okay. do those. Okay. Um, so yeah, but originally I don't know. I really liked it in high school. Like I, I wanted to do English and I chose a couple of different majors. I jumped around, but I was like, I really want to do this. I don't know why. I just right. like loved it. So yeah. writers often say, if you want to be a good writer, you need to read. You mm -hmm. need to read a lot. Yes. So outside of, outside of the curricula that you have to read, what are you reading right now? 
Ooh, what am I reading right now? Well, I am reading like for one of my classes. It's like a post-colonialism uh, British literature course. So I'm reading Zadie Smith's White Teeth, okay. which is fucking amazing. Okay. Anybody yeah. who's read it will tell you that. It's long, but okay. I'll hopefully get through it. Okay. But um, that's what I'm reading right now. So it's like for that class, but I started that one early because I like heard a lot about it. I wanted to read that, but. So you're not just yeah. reading it because someone is saying you have to read this, but right. you're like, oh, I want to read that, so I'm going right. to start now. Because I'll t any English major will tell you we don't read all the books that were assigned. <laughs> you just can't. No. Sometimes you, there's just no way. Well, my and senior, I think they know that. My senior year of high school, I didn't read a single book in AP English <laughs> because Mrs. McSparron, bless her heart, I love you very much, Mrs. McSparron, wherever you are these days, but you read everything to us out loud in class. So she'd assign a chapter for the next day. And then I go, she's just going to read this the next day. Oh, see, that's not good. So why would I read this beforehand? No. And so that's just basically what we did. I love reading, but boy, oh boy, do I despise some of the things that are on the national reading list where I just think, like, how am I going to get through this? For example, I do not like The Great Gatsby. What? Mm. Yeah, I to me Agree. like it is Agree. a boring. Shocker. The whole thing is all symbolism, and by the end you're like, Duh, are that's you the point. Kidding? Not me? into F. Scott like, Fitzgerald. See now, I will. I I disagree. Uh, there's another F. F. Scott Fitzgerald that I really really like. Not Bernice Bob's her hair. No. This side of paradise. That yes. one's really good. Yes. Um. And the same thing with, you know, uh, The Grapes of Wrath is something that's tough for me to get Dragged through. On. But Travels with Charlie, like, I Mice really enjoyed. Mice and Men enjoyed. is awesome. Mice You're going to say yeah, Grapes of Wrath. Like, I didn't like Mice and Men. I found it very frustrating. Really? So yeah. you, want, you hmm. want to know something interesting, I think, about so this ends? is a theory. Is the ending? The no, ending, that's Grapes no, of Wrath I'm thinking of. The ending is, like, kind I'm of a relief. Of, I'm thinking of the ending of Grapes of Wrath, actually. That was a bummer. Mm -hmm. Which was, like, the, whoa, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, did you ever have to read The Jungle? No, so I didn't. The, about the meat. So I thought it was like this expose of the meat packing industry told yeah. through like a fictional thing, which it kind of is. But that one took me for, I was in a, a film class where we had to read that and then we had to watch the movie version and like talk <sighs> about the differences. And I just thought this is impossible. I rather would just watch. Or like read all the sections about like all the horrible things they're doing in the in the meat industry, and not deal with all of the personal things that the the po main Polish character is going through. So <sighs> did did uh, do either of you remember the first time that you read a book that it actually had an impact on you? That reading that book, you suddenly felt I don't know different after reading it, or you realized something about reading that you never. And I'll I'll, I'll start. I'll kick it off with. For me, it was Wrinkle in Time. Oh, I read that in like that. the third grade, I think. I used to love that movie so yeah. much. So I ended up finding that same edition online and buying it and rereading it. And it turned out that it was signed by La Engel. Um, it was from a series of signed books that she did. It was so interesting. So I get this book on eBay for like 75 cents, you know, and because uh, I wanted a particular edition with a particular cover. And so it came in and then I open it up and on the front, it's in the inside cover, it's got her her wow. signature and she's written a message to this guy. And in the back of it was a photo was a photocopy of an article that this guy had written. So she had gone to some college in New York mm -hmm. State and uh, had signed a bunch of books and she wow. signed one for him because he wrote an article about her in like the the paper the next day. And so that was in this thing. And I think the guy who sold the book was just selling a big lot of books that he had mm -hmm. and didn't look inside of it. Yeah. But, so I, I reread that a couple months ago, and it definitely brought me back to that time in third grade where something blew my mind for the first time as I was reading it. So do you either of you have something like that? So I think my earliest one, if we're going back that far, would as be... As far as you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bridge to Terabithia is like the Ooh, earliest one yeah. I can think of that I loved that. And it just like impacted me. Like I don't, I'm, it didn't impact like my life or the way I lived, but like it just like, it was just such a good story. But as far as like, like in high school, I remember reading Frankenstein and that one really, as far as like reading goes and like reading literature, that one like blew my mind just there's so many cool themes in there and it's so interesting thinking of just like the man versus nature thing i was like holy shit mm -hmm. this is awesome but yeah those would be the big two 
when I was so I enjoyed books all through high school, but the one that really like grabbed me and I will reread over and over is Until They Bring the Streetcars Back by Stanley Gordon West, who is an author out of St. Paul, who is still alive when I was in I think I think he's passed away now, but he was alive when I was in high school and the English department would bring him to Fargo every year. So oh, they yeah. would, you know, have him get on a bus and he came to Fargo. And so <laughs> all the students would get to meet him afterwards and ask him questions. And the premise of the book is it's about a young high school age kid in St. Paul. And it, St. Paul used to have a streetcar system and they were just getting rid of the streetcar system, which is what his dad did for a living. And so it's putting all this extra strain on the family. And he ends up making friends with this odd girl who's in his class and she's sort of, um, uh, you know, a weirdo, I think is the term he uses to describe her. And then this whole mystery unravels around it. And because it's based in St. Paul, like I enjoyed that because I've been to St. Paul. Um, Mm -hmm. and that, I mean, that book got me good. And so I'll read any of the Stanley Gordon West books. Finding Laura Bugs is another one. And then most recently, there's a book called Guru, My Days with Del Close, written by a guy named Jeff Griggs, who is a teacher at I.O. in Chicago. And that book is amazing because it's got all this amazing insight into improv. It's got, uh, you know, it's a story about the most famous person you've never heard of before, which is Del Close. And the last couple of years of Del's life mixed in with, like, his biography. It's ju- I mean, it's just a phenomenal writing and storytelling. Hell Yeah. Books. books. Yay, books. <laughs> books are awesome. <laughs> so you want to write movies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, like a particular genre that you want to JD's got get a couple into? pitches he's probably going to throw A couple pitches? You. Okay, yeah, I yeah, got yeah. a great pitch. Um, I like the kind of thing that independent film does where it's like a drama, but it's hilarious all throughout. And it's not, you know, it's not marketed as a comedy. So I like that kind of like overlap of like seriousness and... And emotions and funny shit that happens. What was the 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 Manchester the Amazon Prime movie that they released into theaters that got some Academy buzz? I mean, it is a deep, deep no Manchester yeah, by the Sea. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. A deep drama, but there are. I mean, it's very funny throughout the whole thing, and the mm-hmm. characters are kind of quirky and goofy. And so I always appreciate that. So here's a, here's a pitch for, for a movie I've wanted someone to make for a while. It's the Vatican, okay? Okay. It's the middle of the night. Oh, and God. you see these huge windows, and the moon is casting light through these windows, okay. but it's dark in the hall. And you see someone from the end of the hall, and he's running, 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 running. Finally, he gets to this giant door and just like, you know, pound, pound, pound on the door. And the Pope comes, in and, and you can tell it's the Pope's bedroom. And it's Andy Garcia, who's a very young Pope by Popal, <laughs> Papal standards. I remember this idea of yours now. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're speaking in Italian, <laughs> and you find out that the Pope, because here's the thing. No one ever talks about, like, does the Pope have family? Oh, right? sure. And so in this context, the Pope's younger brother is dead. And he had moved to America and had married an American woman, and they were in a horrible car accident. And so the Pope's brother is dead. It's not something where they think, it's not a Da Vinci Code okay. where there's some, you know, there's some bad stuff. Like, there's no conspiracy theory, but he's just the Pope. The Pope is now the only living relative of their three children. And so the Pope now has to raise. Uh, Actually, it's called Our Father. (laughs) Yeah, I already have the title, Our Father. And so there's a sequence where the older teenage girl needs to learn to drive. So he uses the Pope mobile to teach her how to drive. And he's like, What do I know about changing diapers? I'm with the Pope. Now, up until recently, my dream was to get. Tim Curry in uh, in the role of like a cardinal or an archbishop who is who wanted to challenge the Pope because he's got these radical ideas because he's so young and I don't know who that jerk maybe John Malkovich nowadays oh. would be oh, good yeah. no who plays um, the in Inglorious Bastards the Jew killer at the very beginning is the name he goes by oh Christopher Christoph Waltz. Waltz Christoph Waltz yeah 
He he'd would be, be really good. good. He'd, he'd be, be really good, good as like the domineering <laughs> cardinal that yep. like wants to return to the old ways. And... Right. And so he wants to unseat the pope. Right. And so he's trying to unseat the pope and he's going to use the fact that like he's not concentrating on his papal duties because of these kids. And so I feel like I feel like here's the thing. You could make it as a family comedy and Fox Easily. could release it. Uh, you could make it as more of like a, a wacky comedy and then that's definitely got universal written all over it or you could use like the whatever the the sony the the sony like offshoot is and make it like a little darker mm. and a little sad kind of like an uncle buck I so, love uncle buck uh, uncle buck is hilarious you know because uncle buck is kind of dark at points and she runs away so that's my i am always so there's surprised. a scene where the oldest of the three kids is like a, a she is, she's she's no longer a girl, but not yet a woman. She's at yep. that phase of her life uh-huh. where she's, you know, having feelings and emotions and hormones that are going on in boys. <laughs> and she goes to a party and then the 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 boy that she's interested in is now getting a little too aggressive. And she's trying to tell him no. And he's not listening because he's Italian. And then the pope has to show up. <laughs> With a with a with a drill. Yep. <laughs> oh no, he's cheating on her. That's what he's doing. Yeah. So the girl is not actually getting. That's it, it, He's not getting handsy with the Pope's niece. Niece. He's cheating he on the Pope's niece. He, the Pope assumes it's the niece, but it's not. Yeah, and it finds out it's a different girl. Get your so uncle shows Buck up with facts. A drill? So, yeah, and then he drills. <laughs> you don't drill, know Uncle he, Buck? He, that's how oh, he gets yeah. into the room. Is he drills yeah. it open, right? <laughs> And doesn't he get his hat taken at one point? Yeah, some at the one, party? Of the, one of the jerk kids takes it, and then he gets it back, and they're like, "He's like, do you like my hat?" He was like, "Hey, I give that back to me, you little jerk." Wait, so he showed up in his his pope hat? He would in this instance, <laughs> and how, someone would put like a bombardier hat on him. How instead. much of uh, how much of our father maps on to Uncle Buck then? So much, so much. So this is the Uncle Buck sequel we always wanted, but we never got. It was just like my cousin a buck. It's like a buck of Russell in America. Oh, Russell. My Italian, <laughs> <laughs> um, with his so, Irish name, but I mean that movie pretty much writes itself. Yeah, and, that's know. a fantastic idea. I've been working on it for years. <laughs> Thank you very much. What is the the um? Is it's it... three girls. I think. I think it's got to be three girls. Yeah, I think so too. So oh, yeah. started on the screenplay. No, that pitch no. there is exactly what I have. Okay. But I feel like in the modern Hollywood <laughs> system, that's enough to get that thing greenlit. Oh, absolutely. And they're like, well, we'll just figure it out while we're shooting. Right. And also if they're not little, little, they can't be too young. Yeah. The kids can't be too young. Well, because then everyone's going to think they're in danger. Right. Because like one of the, I'm they're thinking, at the Catholic church. Like in the movie oh, Beethoven, word. the little girl in Beethoven is adorable. But I also feel like she's a little too young for like a place where there's gunplay. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Hey, and don't forget in the movie Beethoven, I don't know if it's been a while since you saw that. Oh yeah. It's Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci are like wow. are the two like bumbling henchmen in that no movie. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yes way. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. I need to go watch that again. Yeah. And I just then, remember him taking the whole family on this like covert Mission, like, what do you bring in, in their station kids wagon? With in the station wagon, and Dad, turn the headlights off. Yep. Haven't you ever followed anyone before? Uh huh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, do you have Do you have a favorite, uh, like, a, or a movie that you enjoy a lot? That sometimes Oof. I use that to send. So I worked at a video store for a long time, and I use what people enjoy to figure out, like, kind of who they yeah. who they are. My recent favorite is Lady Bird. I oh yeah, love great that movie. movie. Oh, it's just excellent. <laughs> Oh, I love that one. The realism of Lady Bird is intense. Like it's so cool. I was I didn't go to Catholic school and I'm not See, a female, here's but here's the thing. I did before I went to North. I was what? in the Catholic school system my whole life. Like since preschool. And so that so. got you that got yeah, you. Yeah, it was very realistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have uh, you seen the Fievel movies, like an American mm-hmm. tale and Fievel Goes West? No. Okay. Well then we won't go down that road. You don't need to embarrass <laughs> yourself anymore, Tucker. I just think you're cherry picking the people that you talk to. Uh, no, about it. I well, have heard you guys fight about it. Okay. But well, give give them. give them a give them a watch okay. at some point when it fits into your busy English schedule, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, watch American watch them in order. Yep. And then let us know which one is better. Mm-hmm. And I think pick, you, <laughs> pick it pick it carefully. Yep. I mean, don't think that you need to like. I can tell that there's some awkwardness now that we have like had this passive aggressive fight in front of you. <laughs> Uh, but we're not fighting. We're not but, fighting. We're not fighting. I just, you know, there is isn't a fight. Uh, Dom DeLuise is the voice of Tiger the Cat in both of them. Yeah. Rest in peace, Dom DeLuise. Oh, 
<laughs> I miss that guy too. Yeah, you recently did a Facebook post about do you miss why did you why did you compare Dom DeLuise with Don Rickles? Is it because both their first names sound alike? No, no. Uh so someone was telling me recently about Dom Rickles, and I'm like, I think you mean Don Rickles. And they're like, No, he was in Cannibal Run. I'm like, then you mean Dom DeLuise. You had part of it correct. <laughs> so it is because of their first name no, sounded no. like. So that was that was what sparked the initial conversation. And I said, well, do you know who Don Rickles is? And so they're saying like, oh, yeah. He's like, but I don't like him at all. He's the worst. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I said, both of these men have amazing careers. Which one, you know, just because you don't. And so I was curious to know, like, what do people like? You know, do you like. And. Did you find it interesting that some people were like Dom DeLuise all the way, and then right. some people were like Don Rickles all right. the way? Don Rickles. I'm in the Rickles camp, but anyways. It's, you know, in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> uh, if you were uh, in ancient Greece, okay, which of the gods do you think you would, like, pray to the most? Hmm. Probably, um, like, Helen. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good choice. That's Did good they choice. pray to the gods? Yeah, they, yeah, they they pray. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Stuff like that for sure. Not the way we do, where it's like I'd really like <laughs> uh, school to be canceled tomorrow. Yeah, it's like I'd like to live through this cold I just got. Yep, Zeus. I just, yeah, I just, <laughs> give that me your strength. Pray too. <laughs> right. I just watched that episode of Fargo, the show, where Phenomenal this guy, show. yeah, first season, he runs out of gas. And he f- tries to get the semi to pull over, and he ends up falling on his face. And he's like, dear Lord, you know, if you help me out this time, I'll be your humble servant forever. And then he looks over, and he sees that end of the windshield wiper from Fargo, the film. Uh-huh. Finds a boatload of money. I don't know. Like, he still doesn't have any gas, though. <laughs> when, when they tied those two things together, I was like, oh, my God, this is brilliant. I think the writing on that show is amazing. It also, is. by the way, that guy... Oliver Platt, who was one of the henchmen <laughs> oh, in look Beethoven. At that. Oh, look at that. Um, and he's Greek. His, his name is like, is it like Stavros? And then something other? Because like he's the king. He's the food, like does, he's the king of groceries in that. Like that's what he does with all this money is he opens up a grocery store. So he's the grocery king. Well, you know that beforehand. No, because I'm behind. I'm very behind on No, no, Fargo. but you've already they, you've already been into his grocery store at that point in the, because this is like a, this is more or less a flashback Oh, to him. is that of the king? Yeah. So oh, wow. you've already been in his grocery store. So if you wow. if you look closely like I did as an Oliver Platt fan, you'll see like the standees of Oliver Platt. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, he's the grocery king. <laughs> oh, he's um, the grocery king. <laughs> JJ, if you could be the king of something like that in Fargo, what would you be the king of? <sighs> and that goes for you as well. Uh-huh. Whatever title you want to use, king, queen, regent, emperor, whatever, it, whatever title you want. I would like to be the asphalt king. So that if you need something <laughs> paved, you think of J.J. Gordon first and foremost. Okay. And I'll come out and I'll be like, I dub thee. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What about you, Gabby? Um, well, firstly, the Asphalt King sounds like a really good, like in The Sopranos where he has like this garbage business, mm-hmm. asphalt business. Um, you know, think of all the bodies up, I could hide. Mafia people. Yeah. That's your mm. your cover. Um, I would love to be the king of Hornbachers. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. But no, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'd go for king of Hornbachers because everything in there, you could have it all. You right, know? right. I'd just go and go to the deli for lunch. Right. Yeah. Hey, can we uh, establish this? In Fargo, Moorhead, we have Hornbachers as the dominant grocery store. But only some of them have uh, that really nice salad bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the where you pay I by the pump. bought it recently. Did they? Yeah. In See, the last couple of years. Yeah. Like yeah. Southside doesn't have a period. 13th mm-hmm. Avenue has it. I don't count 13th Avenue. That's West Fargo. That that's is pretty much West Fargo. Definitely South Fargo still. <laughs> no, no, I don't count yeah, that Yeah, that's one. by the mall. Yeah. That that's... actually was the Hornbachers I used to avoid at all costs. <laughs> it is still. You can't get out of there. Yeah, right? There's you no did... good way to oh, get out of that no Hornbachers. There, there is, there is. You just got to figure out the, the tricks of that place. That's where my pharmacy is. That's <laughs> okay, right. so here's oh the thing. God. If you exit at the exit that goes towards... So here's the thing. From that Hornbachers, right. I live... Southeast. Yep. 
So no matter oh, which way I go out, I'm either heading west uh-huh. into West Fargo or right. I am heading north up to Maine. There's no way for me to appropriately get out unless I backtrack all the way by the Century Movie Theater, no. go underneath by Acme, and then work my way over like that. The exit out onto 42nd Street. You can take a left right there and then get the Oh, 13th. my God. Have you tried to take that left? I have, and it's a pain, but you can do it. No, because it all, does the, exist. all the jerks you from Barnes & Noble are always time, pulling into your lane. You have to time bad. your grocery. Grocery store, there. right? Though you you can't be going to a grocery store in peak hours. You just can't do it. What period. if that's the only time that you can go? To change your schedule, something's wrong with your it's life. Peak hours because everybody has because con- everyone goes at that time. Yeah. You've lost You're control of your life. Work. Then yes. you've lost control of I'm your life. I'm not gonna then. go home and then get back in my car. I'm not that hungry. I've never been that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Hornbacher's Express near me, and I just call that my refrigerator because <laughs> I don't keep any food that I'm gonna eat. My refrigerator is basically where I keep food that I'm just not gonna eat yet, but haven't thrown it away yet. My refrigerator is where I keep condiments and food that I'm never going to eat. Yeah. 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 That's a very college-y thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember at one point opening the refrigerator and being like, there's a stick of butter that's just sitting there. <laughs> and then there are like, there's three things of ketchup. Yeah. That are all like half or more gone. <laughs> I had to stop buying like heads of lettuce because then I just now have a head of lettuce that is going to pretty soon start giving off like liquid. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, in my younger days, and I had an apartment. I had an apartment with two bedrooms, but at one point, six people were living in oh it. Oh my god! Because I had friends who just needed to like use it as a flop house. In fact, mm-hmm. I had a friend who slept in the bathroom every <laughs> night with one leg into the tub and the other <laughs> on the cool tile floor because he'd always be so drunk. He's um, married now. He's married. Yeah, <laughs> he used to like at one point he took a ham that we were we had. <laughs> In there, and he just ate the ham, like eating off, picking off the ham. And he was so embarrassed that he hid the ham, and we didn't find it for months. Um, what a horrible human being! Oh my god, anyway. Uh, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, uh, I had, I had a gallon of milk, and it was past its expiration date by a month, so we mm. were like, we should throw out that milk. But also, like, look how much garbage we have. It means if I throw this away, it means I have to take the garbage out today. I have to put it off. Six months go by. And do you know what happens to milk? Like, as it breaks down on a molecular level, it releases a gas. (laughs) Oh, God. And so God. the 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 milk carton is now like expanded on all sides, <laughs> and it looks like it's ready to explode. So much so that when you pick it up, you can tell some kind of science has taken place inside of here. Some kind of. And this is that's never what you want sound. in a fridge. No, no, it is any not. science no, going no, on. No. No. Uh, Real colony so you got growing here. Yeah, and, you're and gonna then, find a beehive in it. <laughs> two months later, after I finally throw out that milk and I decide it's time to change my life, I'm going to be a better Sorry, human eight being. Eight months has gone by now. I went to, or I got the, the Schwann's man delivered. And so I got all of this frozen, all these frozen vegetables. Because here's a tip about frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables are picked at the peak of the season and then frozen. So frozen vegetables will always taste better if prepared correctly than if you bought like an ear of corn during the huh. winter that came from somewhere else that's growing it and in a in a situation it's not supposed to. So uh eat the best, freeze the rest, I think is what the term is that they use at the NDSU extension <laughs> nice. office. Anyway. So I bought all of these frozen vegetables and like wontons. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna change my life. But I broke inside my freezer, I broke one of the little shelving units no. Now, luckily, at this time, there was a product on the television called Super Putty that I was really excited to try, where it's parts <laughs> green and parts red, which is just like in the first Mission Impossible movie. But you <clears throat> mix these two things together, and then you can mold it however you want, and then it'll cure and become almost like cement. Does so I was like, this work is sweet. in the freezer? So I thought, I was like, it's going to be <laughs> perfect in the freezer, right? So I fix this thing, I shut it, and I'm like, good to go. Well, what I wasn't good to go with is... A chemical reaction is taking place when you mix these two things together. It's essentially like epoxy, like a Mm -hmm. putty epoxy. Well, when the chemical reaction takes place, it gives off a gas. And I don't know if you've ever put something really stinky in your fridge or freezer and it like it changes the taste of everything else. Yeah. So about a week later, I'm 
I have my sister over and we're eating frozen pizza and she takes a bite of the pizza and she puts it down and then she just sits and watches me and I'm not really paying attention. So she's waiting for me to take a bite of the pizza because she tasted it and she's like, it tastes like chemicals. But she wanted me to also experience it rather than just saying like, hey, don't take a bite of this pizza. Mm -hmm. And so I had to throw away all that stuff. I mean, pounds and pounds and pounds of vegetables No, because they all like I opened everything and everything smelled like this chemical. That really, sucks. yeah, just like screwed myself like that. What a so bummer! Let my mistakes like be, <laughs> well, you know, the, the the warning for your future, Gabby. I have not ever ordered anything off of the television. Ever? Ever? Even when I and when I was a kid, I really wanted to. There was always cool shit on there. Yeah, yeah. but they, they don't even market things anymore that we would any yeah. of us would really probably want to buy. My it. dad does buy. Oh, things it, off of the television, though. Oh, yeah, sure. QVC like, is did he buy got... Flex Seal? No, but... Because I like my Flex Seal. <laughs> he got this little carving of the Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is that QVC? I don't know what it was. Maybe he was watching, like, Prairie Public, and they had some Christian Christian thing on. I don't know. They're I have no like... idea. But he has, like, several of them, and I know he bought them off the TV. Oh, was he a collector? No. <laughs> okay, he's not a Last Supper collector. No, he's just a non-decorator, so I think these are... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Eugene. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> also, side note, do you find it odd that the the big the big catch on ordering stuff off of online is like, hey, everyone, order within the next 20 minutes, and you'll get a second one of this for free? Well... Why would I need a second one if you're telling me this is the only this is the only sponge I'll ever need for the rest of my life? Why do I need two of those mm-hmm. sponges? Or why do you have so many sponges laying around? Right. Sell them in a store then. Right. Right. Yeah, if you're it's so good. You're only marketing on these commercials. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> that usually means like we have overstock and we need to get rid yeah. of this garbage because no one wants to buy it. So two for one. The big uh, catch for me was um, not having a credit card because I was seven. Yeah. So <laughs> I that remember is a th- barrier. <laughs> I told, for sure. I wanted to order, uh, like, I wanted to get on, like, one of those CD clubs oh, back yeah. in the yeah. day. Yeah. And my mom was like, no, because they send you one and then they send you, keep sending them to you mm-hmm. for the rest of your life. And I'm like, but mom, it's the chipmunks in low places singing <laughs> country's greatest hits. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good horror movie. Like, you keep getting chipmunk CDs oh, all over the time and, over. and you have to listen or you die or something. Do you guys remember the song, The Cat? came back no so it's a song about how like this guy the this cat shows up to his house and then like it's about him killing this cat over and over and over again but then it's like <laughs> it's like you know like I sh- he shoved it in you know he, he mailed it to pakistan but the cat came back the very <laughs> next day the cat came back he didn't really want it. <laughs> that sounds horrible. I used to think like that is a nightmare where this like demon cat keeps just like coming back and you never get rid of it Send this to Pakistan. (laughs) I don't remember exactly what it was. Let's send it to another country. (laughs) Here, you guys. You must really hate that. Ask Gabby a question. I'll find out. I'll tell you what the exact lyrics are. What he did to this cat. (laughs) I probably wasn't mailed to Pakistan, but I'm pretty Uh, sure he mailed it somewhere. So, um, you are so in your journalizing. I'm going to re-say that. In your journalisming, no. In your writing as a journalist. (laughs) There we go. Um, you've done some work for the High Plains Reader. I have, um, yeah. Which is pretty awesome because JJ Meets World is currently, as of the recording of this episode, on the cover. On the cover. Of the HPR. Yeah, How did you get hooked really up fun. with the HPR? Um, that's funny. Uh, so I was in a creative writing class last semester. My friend Ryan Janky was interning with HPR. I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like, how'd you get that gig? And he was like, oh, no, I just reached out to him. I'm sure they're looking for people. Like, I could drop your name, whatever. And so, yeah, he hooked me up with Sabrina, uh, who Previous is Previous guest editor. on the podcast, Sabrina Hornung. Woo, and an awesome person. And, yeah, so she sends me stories every week, like ideas for them. And has, she's so well-connected. She already has everybody's email and phone number. She's like, oh, you could interview this person. Here's like where they live. No, but Sabrina's yeah, definitely one of the most connected people yeah, in this it town. Yeah, it seems like it. Like she's been around forever. I remember, she's because she's not from Fargo. She's from Valley City, right? Or Jamestown. 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 Okay. Right? And, yeah, not Valley City. Her dad lives in Ypsilanti now. That's right, that's right. What's but, that? It's, it's town. <laughs> it's a town that when you see it on like 20 miles to Ypsilanti, you're like, why y- Yip? 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeeps. <laughs> but uh, I remember shortly after like graduating high school in 03 and be hanging out downtown Fargo and I'd see Sabrina and I'd go, that is the leggiest person I have ever seen. <laughs> like that person has longer, a longer body than most people have ever seen. And she was really like slinky and she would go to every art opening and everything. And so Sabrina has just been kind of a force of nature in Fargo mm-hmm. for years. And she's, she's Fargo she, famous. She's probably connected oh, yeah. to more people than either you or me in just, just, she's just constantly out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for example, uh, when I started working at the Fargo Theater, my wife at then time at that time my girlfriend, I said I met this really cool girl I'm going to work with named Sabrina. She's like, yeah, I know Sabrina. Sabrina was in the nice same dorm as me. It's like, oh, so I guess you know everyone. Uh, the Discord was early with you too. It was so early. Uh, so, uh, are you, do you like do you like writing? Uh, for like the HPR? Yeah, it's really fun because I always get like arts and culture stuff, which I really enjoy. Um, <laughs> it's funny because like, you know, when you have grandparents and you write and you're published, they're like, oh, we're going to pick up a copy. But all my grandparents are really conservative and the HPR is the mm-hmm. absolute opposite of that. But my articles are not political like almost at all. And um, other than that, they're in HPR, which, you know, I just I don't really have an interest in like political writing, um, but I do have an interest in politics. I just right. I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, it's just not what I'm writing about. And you're not so, writing about a political point of view, but you would write about politicians when they're in the middle of something that's newsworthy. Oh, sure. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> so my grandparents like pick up HPR just to read mine and they like my grandma one of my grandmas is so conservative that she's like and then i have to throw the rest of it out i tear out yours and <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i i can understand uh, that it cracks me up it makes me feel good too because she has to <laughs> buy or not buy it it's free she has to but go to the grocery store be seen a, picking yeah, it up i know she's probably hiding it from all of her friends <laughs> What do you like, got there? Yeah, well, you, you know what? I think we stumbled upon a brilliant idea for the HPR is they should make a for sale version that's for conservatives who don't want to face all of the liberal content. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. they can just get a version that just has the liberal content, like, and it's like a dollar. <laughs> and it's like a page of mostly the ads. <laughs> right, it's a film review. <laughs> it's it's a f- film review. Yep. There you go. Uh, I got it. So the first time I looked at this, I, th- I thought. God damn it, Tucker! Did you wear a shirt that had a stain on it the day we did this <laughs> no, photo shoot? No. But then, upon like closer inspection, I didn't know. I was like, "Oh, I see. He's bleeding out of the ear in this cover." Have you taken like? Did you look at the? Yeah, did they I ask did. you about the imagery? Do they no, were they like? No, what do you think about that having was the Tucker photo bleed? that I took of your faces, mm-hmm. and they used that, and then did me real well with uh, some graphic design. They really did. I didn't know until I looked. It it goes live on the website on Wednesday nights right. before we release the paper on Thursdays. So on Wednesday, I'm like refreshing, like <laughs> I'm gonna be the front page, and and then it was finally there, and I was like, oh shit, that's dope. I know, but I it think does, it's yeah, nice. the earphones, yeah. Raul has the same privileges at HPR that I do with this show, where he just gets to make the cover art and then just goes out. Then just so you just don't out. know what's gonna happen <laughs> afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although I'm thinking about maybe stealing just that for this thumbnail. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, why not? We'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Uh, we get to inter- we get to talk to him later today, yeah. so we'll maybe tell him at that point we're stealing his creative property. <laughs> also later today, we're talking to John Lamb, actually in a little bit here, who oh, also cool. used to write for the HPR. Whoa! So to- and then I'm pretty sure Diane Miller actually worked for the HPR. She was. Too. She was. In yeah. fact, she right. had Sabrina's role Today before is Sabrina. An HPR wow. day. Goodness. Uh, oh yeah. I wish we had more copies laying around. Uh, <laughs> I remember when I, we worked at the Fargo Theater. Do you remember when? So HPR used to have this old van that was in the Fargo Theater parking lot that was just full of old copies of HPR, like really old. And then it burned up so that one day. Fire remember hazard. that? Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty. That was an exciting day uh, at the Fargo Theater, but not so much for the HPR. Yeah. Uh, did I see that they're selling the HPR building? I don't know. I think they are. No clue. We'll have to find out more. Don't to know. Uh, we'll have to find out more on that. Okay, so Gabby, as we get closer to the end of this this interview, which by the way it turned out to be less of an interview and more of us just enjoying the art of conversation, which is what Absolutely. this is really what it is. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. What are you listening to for other podcasts? Um, I've been listening to I so I started um, listening to the last podcast on the left. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't get it. Like, and then I was talking to my friend who recommended it, and he's like, yeah, I mean, their humor is just really, like, you kind of got to know it or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know these people. And they're, like, cracking up. And I'm like, where was the joke there? So, uh, but. It's very inside baseball. Yeah. So that one, I don't know. I've been listening to your guys's, um, which I love. And Do you have a particular sweet. episode that you're So the you're Toby fancy? Jones one. Oh, I that's love. a good one. The Bill Lempy one is hilarious. And then there was one where you're talking to, I forget who you're, okay, when you guys were just talking about all of your jobs that you've oh, had, yep, that, one. that one was a good one. And then... No, okay, so it's not to interrupt you too much. Yeah, no, but go ahead. The Bill Lempy episode. Are you listening to Fargo Talks Fargo as yeah. you're watching through? Yeah. Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty neat, isn't it? It is pretty neat. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little super fan of all our local podcasts. Hell yeah. But my favorite one remains Lexicon Valley, um, which yeah, Columbia linguistics professor. I forget his name. But he talks about the beauty of the language. Well, he talks about it's more like scientific, like he's going into not only like etymology, but like how do these words change? Like the word happy, mm-hmm. you know, how did we even get that? Stuff like that. I just find it incredibly that does sound interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Or like swear words. Or there's one he has called fucking insertion. So like when you're saying like abso fucking lootly, like mm-hmm. there's like literally linguistic rules to that. <laughs> like like where to break up the word. Yeah, and... Like you can't say ab fucking salutely. Like there's a natural way that wow. it happens. Pencil fucking vein. Like there's places you can't huh. do it. And I was like, whoa, you know, these little things that go on in our head with like the science of language that we don't even think about. We don't even have to think J about. J fucking J. Yeah. yeah, there's really not much <laughs> that you've got there like, to break that up. Who are these people named Jay and why J-J do I need to know fucking. that they're fucking? Duh. I mean, fucking J. I mean, J fucking yep. J. 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 fucking Gordon. <laughs> there, oh, that there would be you it. go. That's the one there right you there. go. Yeah, first name, insert uh, fuck for the middle name, and blow it out there. Uh, any interest in starting your own podcast? Yeah, I would yeah. love to. Yeah. What are you going to talk about? Um, like how awesome stuff. like English majoring is and no, stuff. No, I would never talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> what about like it's a secret English society of how awesome we know that it is. <laughs> That's why no one else knows. We don't tell you. And like everyone writes their name down in a book in the library, and that's how you become a member of that society. Well, you, you also have to wear a, a large black robe with a hood up. Oh, okay. And there's like a choir. Very pagan, some Satan yeah. worship, but you know. Yeah, like right. you do at an English yeah. major well, secret yeah. meeting. Well, we we put a book in the middle. And yeah, let your grandma know that that's what you're doing. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sound of books hitting table. Like, like oh, there's yeah. always that scene in a movie where they've got to research something and the big stack are like, whomp. And then I also want to be like, uh, there's a limit to how many books you're allowed to check out. <laughs> so I'm going to call shenanigans on this movie. Um, one of my favorite things is to watch super cuts of like things that – Happen in the movie world that never happened in the real world mm, mm-hmm. um, that I really enjoy. I just get a real kick out of those things where you just take for granted like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's not how it works. And that's not how it works ever. Like what? Like checking out 30 books at a time. Oh, yeah. Like no one ever gets to check out 30 books at a no. time. Uh, what was another one? Someone. Uh, oh, really? They're just going to be Googling at this point. Yeah, I mean, all your answers are there. In fact, why haven't they made Google the movie, where someone's like, <laughs> someone's like, oh, you Google know, I'm in, I'm in love with this person. Uh, I need to know if they're in love with me. Well, just Google them. Be like, oh, they're married. <laughs> Sorry. It's is, just is, a, is it a loveless a relationship hour. of how googling something actually ends most film plots? Yeah. Like this oh, would have ended really God, quickly had someone one. just googled. No, there is a little. It's like a web short by Cassie David, who's Larry David's daughter. What? What? Yeah, and she's like producing her own um, little web series and stuff on YouTube. Um, called 86th and this episode is like called look it up and it's like three millennial girls like sitting on a couch outside and they're like uh she's like i think she's like chris messina is so hot yeah he's so hot is he married i don't know you should look it up and like and then it's just like yeah he's married and they're like oh (laughs) and it goes on like that you know and then they're like okay we've been on our phones for like hours my brain hurts like i've learned so much stuff we should just leave our phones here and go get a smoothie. And they're like, they get out and they're like, which smoothie place should we go to? <laughs> and, then, and then it just like, 
yeah so that's really funny but so that's a good video that we should watch i would love to have a podcast talking about like um millennial things i don't know if it's still millennials because people say like if you're born, like i was born in 95 right so you're are you a zennial then so I'm technically like right, it's yeah yeah I'm a you're on the cusp yeah I yeah. would love a podcast like talking about shit that we do because it's like it's really interesting when you analyze it. You know, the I think the shame is that millennials get a bad. It's an easy thing to say just like, oh, millennials. Yeah. And millennials get a bad rap for so many different things. But they're an interesting generation. You know, so the, the baby, baby boomers are an interesting generation and the generation kind of. In between the baby boomers and the next uh, major generation, Gen Xers. Yeah, Gen X. Oh my Those god, those hate us the most. Which I is find. interesting. I think it's because they're jealous. Yeah. Because like, we're not. Are we're millennials, right? We're considered yeah. millennials. Okay, good. Because I was gonna yeah, say it's eighty one. I think. Yeah. Or eighty two. If you're born after that, I believe. But we'll have to look it up. I we'll find to Gen it. Xers to be so condescending so often. It's because they had to wear so much flannel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they had to wear so much flannel. And they couldn't even take the benefits of flannel of like being able to, you know, button or zip them up so that it provides the warmth. They had to always wear them open with a t shirt. So they were miserable. And then they had to tie it around their waist. And then they had shows like 90210 that just uh. n- never accomplished anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, I don't feel bad for Tori Spelling. She drank the night before graduation. She shouldn't be allowed to walk. <laughs> Who didn't do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no so kidding. Let's, uh, let's move this thing along and tell people if they want to find you online, where they should they find you? Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my in- Instagram name, I just changed it. It's Gabriellisms um, with oh. two L's. Yeah. Or you could find me on Twitter, gswizzle96, but I'm not on there much. Um, you can read me in the HPR. Does that mean you were born in 90? No. No, 95. I was born in 95. Okay. I thought it was like funny because it was like 69, but backwards. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 95 was taken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then I'm also, I do news newscasts with the Bison Information Network, which you can watch on Channel 494, Cable One, oh. or on YouTube. Um, we record on Thursday nights. But, yeah, read my shit in the HPR. And like it. Right on the social medias, people are liking stuff still? Yeah, on the social medias. Yeah, HPR1.com. Read about Tucker and JJ. Oh, yeah. And listen to their podcast, too. Um or just We're gonna just use that as the pitch, like they'll buy. be like, "This is their podcasts or whatever." <laughs> Listen to their just, podcasts too. It's really good. Um, it's like my English major. Pick up a copy of HPR and physically draw a thumbs up if you like it. Now that and is a dandy idea. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Gabby Hirsch, thanks so much for being our guest. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. A huge thanks to Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty for sponsoring this podcast. Folks, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, contact Natalie Deutsch today because Natalie Deutsch is not only a previous podcast guest, she's somebody who's going to care enough to sell your property for top dollar. She's also going to find you the best price possible if you're purchasing a new home. Last year on average, Natalie earned her clients $4,000 over list price on their homes and sold them faster than the market average. On average, Natalie's selling a home every 3.74 days. That's two homes a week. Those numbers don't lie. Find out why Natalie is one of the top agents in this entire market. Get a hold of her today, Natalie at HatchRealityFM.com. You can also call 701-388-9338 or go on to LiveFargoMoorhead.com. That's LiveFargoMoorhead.com. Read all of her amazing reviews and then listen to her episode of JJ Meets World. Thanks again to Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed this episode of JJ Meets World and would like to help us continue to produce two new episodes every week, you can donate to our Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash JJ Meets World and donate today. Even as little as a dollar a month can go a long way. Visit our website at www.jjmeetsworld.com or hit up our social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 
all the sites the kids are using these days. If you'd like to stay up to date on new episodes of JJ Meets World, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever you consume the podcast that you love. JJ Meets World is produced every week by Tucker Lucas. You can find out more about Tucker's work by checking out www.moonbasemaria.com. If you want to get in touch with your host with the most, go to linebenders.com and you can find direct contact info for JJ. I own like nine pairs of sunglasses, but they all are bent out of shape because I put them in my back pocket. I've got not a big butt, but a pretty dense butt. So most of them are all squished out. And I think that we're going to start offering those to Patreon subscribers. The way like some people sell their underpants, you can have JJ squash sunglasses. Would you, would you patronize us for that? 